have an important show that none of you can afford to miss. It's the life-threatening disease we fear most, cancer. Now, most of us think of it as an unavoidable condition we have no power to prevent. But today, in my Ask Dr. Oz Cancer Prevention Clinic, I'm revealing how you can avoid cancers throughout your entire body. Here to help me on this head-to-toe journey are three leading experts who are also cancer survivors. I found a lump in my breast during my normal breast self-exam. I went to have a mammogram and found out that it was breast cancer. I was only 34 and it was just one month after my wedding. As a physician, I'd seen so many women die of breast cancer. I thought I was gonna be one of those women. I had a mastectomy, I had chemotherapy, and I had radiation. While I wouldn't wish breast cancer on anyone, I can honestly say that it's made me a much better person, a better physician, a better wife. So I strongly advocate breast self-awareness, mammography, and prevention. I'm a dermatologist, and I understand the importance of self-skin exams. Two and a half years ago, I noticed that a mole on my leg had been changing. And even though it didn't look particularly scary, the dermatologist in me knew that it needed to be removed. I wasn't particularly worried about it because I don't have any history of skin problems and there's no family history of skin cancer. But when I got the biopsy report, I found out I had melanoma, life-threatening melanoma, and I was only 37 years old. I was lucky. My surgeon was able to remove it all, and it hasn't returned since. Now I'm really strong with patients that they need to be their own health advocate. Have you noticed any of your lesions changing size, shape, or color? They have the power to detect and prevent cancer by getting to know their own body very well, both inside and out. I was 31 years old. I was a very successful, ambitious physician. And that's when I discovered that I had brain cancer. I started with surgery and we thought that might be enough, but it did come back a few years later and I had surgery again, and chemotherapy and radiotherapy. That's when I realized that uh, if I stuck with conventional treatment, I was probably going to get a conventional outcome, which doesn't look good at all for brain cancer. But I learned that there is a lot you can do to help yourself uh, resist cancer growth in your body. It's been 18 years since I was first diagnosed with uh, brain cancer and I found great meaning in being able to bring what I learned to other people so it can help them. Joining us is the author of the New York Times bestseller, Anti-Cancer, A New Way of Life, Dr. David Servan Schreiber. Also here is CEO of the Greater New York City affiliate of the Susan G. Komen for the Cure, Dr. Dara Richardson Heron and from the Johns Hopkins Hospital Center and the Washington Institute of Dermatological Laser Surgery, Dr. Elizabeth Tanzi. Welcome all to the show. Thank you. So let's begin our cancer prevention journey way up there in the brain. And Debbie's here from Florida. Hi, Debbie, how are you? So Debbie, what's your question? I'm in my eighth year of brain cancer remission. And I just want to know, how could I have prevented my brain cancer? If there's any way. Debbie, what do you think? Well, uh, we don't have absolute proof about the best ways to prevent uh, brain cancer, but there are a number of things that we can do in terms of lifestyle that can help slow down the growth of any kind of cancer, including hopefully brain cancer in the body. And that would include, uh, for example, eating more vegetables, uh, reducing sugar uh, dramatically in the diet, fatty fish with its omega-3 fatty acids, mm -hmm. and drinking at least three cups of green tea per day all of which help the body sustain its defenses against cancer. Yeah. Straightforward tips, but they're ones only you can do for yourself. Yeah. Can I get close to you for a second? You don't smoke, do you? Oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you want me to lie to you? No, you can't. I can smell you. You don't have to lie to me. Okay. You don't have to about, forget what David said. Stop smoking. Okay. Now, I'm, by the way, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just being real about the, about the prevention issues. You know this already. I'm not going to talk I about know, this on national TV. But there's no point talking about leafy green vegetables when you're still smoking. All right, but thanks very much. Okay. Appreciate it.